Greetings. Let's explore publishing files in KSU Sender Pro version 2.6. We see our program. Initially, you need to check the basic settings. Let's go to the settings. We see a lot of options here. We are primarily interested in this option, the period of validity in hours. What does it mean? This option affects all senders work. Loading from a hot folder. Loading from Instagram. File synchronization. In any case, only files that have been created or modified in the last 12 hours will participate in the process. If I want to have files for the last four days here, I have to change the value to 72 hours. 100 hours, 120 hours, and so on, depending on how much I need. Let's set 48 hours here. Okay. The next important option is in the Paths section. Here I have to specify the hot folder from which my files will be taken. This hot folder will apply to all the presets we create next. I choose. After I have made some changes to the program settings, I must save them. Saved. Actually, now let's move on to publishing files. Publishing a file is done through presets. Let's take a look at publishing files to Google Drive first. Let's create a new preset. Check that it is active and save it. After that, go to the Publishing Files section, to the Google Drive section. Log in to Google. After we clicked on this button, a window for logging into our account appears. We select our account on behalf of which the publication will be made. We allow access to the application. That's all. After that, we can close this page. As we can see, the authorization was successful. In the list, we see only those folders that will be created using the KSU sender program. If we have created some folder on the Google account, it will not be displayed here. Let's think of a name. We create a folder. The folder has been successfully created. Select this folder in the drop down list after that. Be sure to save the preset. In order for us to display links to Google in our QR codes, we select a link to Google Drive here and turn on synchronization. We save the preset. After that, when we clear the cache, we will see that our files began to be located again, uploaded to the gallery and simultaneously uploaded to Google Drive. Now let's set up posting to Dropbox. Also go to Presets. Let's create a new preset. Be sure to check that it is active. We choose that we will have a link to Dropbox. We save our preset. After that, go to the Dropbox section. Click Login to Dropbox. We have an authorization window. We allow our application to make changes to our disk. Now we can close this window. Authorization in Dropbox was successful. Unlike Google, folders are displayed here, which we have already created at the root of our disk. There is a small nuance, do not store too many files and folders in the root folder. The fact is that the algorithm reads somewhere around 100 objects. If you have a lot of folders in the root folder, then they will be not displayed here. I choose some folder. I turn on the upload of files to Dropbox and save the preset. I clear the cache again. We check. The file has been added. 
Uploaded successfully to Dropbox. Consider synchronization with our website, Internet Gallery. In the same way, we create a new preset. We make it active, we look that we have a link to the website. We save the preset. We go to the settings of the Internet Gallery. What you need to do initially before you basically use this synchronization. You need to set up your website. In the folder of our program there are files for the website. We create a domain, subdomain or some folder within our domain. And in this folder we load completely all directories and all files from the for underscore site folder. After that, we need to set the permission to 777 for the data folder. That is, this is the right right for everyone. And in the pass.php file, type the password that we will use for synchronization. After that, type the address of website and the password that we used in the website settings. I typed the site address and password. I turn on synchronization with the website. The gallery, which is displayed on the site, has advanced access rights. That is, we can show the entire gallery, or we can show the gallery only to those people who have a PIN code, or we can show only the file that matches the given PIN code. This is controlled by these settings. I'll show the entire gallery. We can also enter our email settings in these fields so that a person can send a file to himself by email directly from the website. We save the preset. And we see that our files have been uploaded to the site. Now let's look at the settings of QR codes. Let's go back to the presets and look at the top block. These are the settings of our QR codes. We have three types of QR codes. This is a QR code for connecting to Wi-Fi, a QR code for a gallery and a QR code for a file. The first block of settings relates to QR codes in the built-in gallery and on our web pages. We can display both, in fact, the QR code itself, as well as the caption to it. For example, I want to display a caption for a Wi-Fi QR code. I turned on the display of all three types of QR codes and entered captions for them. In addition to the galleries, as we know, we have two more specialized pages. This is the last video and the carousel. What are these pages? Basically they are similar. On one and on the other video in full screen mode. The difference is that on the page with the latest video, we will always display the latest video, and in the carousel we will have all the video spinning in turn. These three tabs are responsible for setting up QR codes on these pages. For example, I want the last video on my page to be displayed with the QR code of the gallery. I turn it on and I can adjust the position where it will be. I want it to be positioned relative to the top left corner. I can change the size of this QR code and the margin from the edge. Let's see how it looks on the page. I can find links in the main settings section. Here I see links to the web gallery, carousel and the latest video page. Here it is our video, our QR code and the caption to it. We return to the settings. In the same way, you can set up a QR code for a file, and not for the entire gallery. We can also display a QR code to connect to Wi-Fi. To do this, we go to this block. Type the name of our network and password to connect to it. What is the catch? If we created Wi-Fi without a password, then as practice has shown, when we open this code on devices running Android, we do not automatically connect. Therefore, I strongly recommend that you still create a Wi-Fi network using WPA encryption, in which a password is required. I entered my Wi-Fi network settings. 
I save the preset. Let's display the QR code in the lower right corner. It will be displayed on the last page. Let's update our page. As we can see, the QR code has appeared. When we publish a file in our online gallery, we create a link to it immediately when we add files to sender. That is, we can display the QR code even before the file is uploaded to the site. For example, we lost the internet, but we can already distribute links to people, QR codes they will act after we have uploaded the file. In the case of Dropbox and Google, we get a link only after the file has been uploaded to the website. If for some reason we still want to immediately display our file without a QR code, then we enable this option, show preview even if the link has not yet been received. When this option is enabled, our last picture will immediately appear on our pages, and after this file is uploaded to the clouds, a QR code will appear. We will move on to the last kind of links in QR codes. Why? In fact, we created our QR code for connecting to a Wi-Fi network. It is possible to download files directly from sender without uploading to the internet or in the absence of the internet, these are the so-called local links. In this case, we must choose that we use local links and select the IP address that this computer has on our Wi-Fi network. In order to use a direct link, people must be on the same network as the computer. You set up your hotspot, and let people connect to your Wi-Fi network. Then they can use these direct links. At each specific moment in time, our QR code contains only one of the types of links. We can upload the file to both Dropbox and Google and even our website at the same time. I have all three synchronizations enabled, which means that my file is uploaded to all three resources at the same time. But there will be only one link in the QR code. Which particular link will be used at the moment, we choose here. Basically, that's all. Thank you for your attention. I hope it has become clearer to you how to use QR codes and how to publish your files.